Her name Steamy, by the way. In the development process, the Steam controller was supposed to be a jack of all trades, but in reality, it fails to do anything well. Begging. Get ready for some review section, cause well, I'm reviewing the reviews of the Steam Controller today. I promise it doesn't sound as boring as it seems. Maybe. Initially, I was going to come in with guns blazing and raging. A lot. But going about this review section video with no tact, while very, very tempting, is something I fear I would regret. So no worries guys, I have my pacifier on. Let me be honest, it was because of Dark Souls. Now, now don't get off your seat sir, I unfortunately have not had the pleasure praising the sun and so forth. I was told by a really wonderful friend of mine, very very kindly, that I tend to get frustrated easily. So I ended up giving up. Now before I had given up, I was told to play Dark Souls with a controller, and that's where the Steam controller popped up. After scrapping my plans of playing Dark Souls, I frankly felt a bit pathetic. Was I really incapable of picking up something challenging? And so, I decided to get the Steam controller. Now of course, this was coupled with the fact that I had never, ever, ever played with a controller. Ever. Maybe once or twice with the Xbox or PS3 or PS2 controller. Some dual trigger console controller. Pfft, gay. But I heard the Steam controller had a sharp learning curve, but those who passed the test usually never used anything else. So, yeah. Steamy is a very versatile person, and I am extremely dominant in our relationship. Wait, what were we talking about again? Sorry about that. What I meant to say was, the Steam Controller is basically so versatile in the sense that he or she can adhere to any command that you give out to it. And to be more specific, practically any input I key into my SC can output as anything that you want. So knowing that from experience, I find it really, really shocking that most people on YouTube at least have reviewed the Steam Controller and claimed that it was for one, cheap feeling. The plastic has actually been claimed to be stronger than the Xbox controller's plastic by some, of course. Totally not from Reddit. Uh, some people call the Steam Controller ugly, uh, which I don't really understand. I mean, I don't exactly find the Xbox controller pretty looking anyway, so you know, I find that really difficult to diagnose. I mean, I've never really found a controller pretty, except for the Steam controller now, so I'm feeling very conflicted from that. And a lot of other people who try not to offend or seem too biased, or at least are trying to give the SC a new, bold idea, sort of, you know, not such a harsh standpoint, usually claim it to just be weird. And, uh, well, it's just, at the end of the day, it just feels very biased. A truly impartial review of the Steam Controller's functions would have at least covered some of the customizations available within this device. And aside from the comments stating the obvious that a lot of these reviews don't even bother covering, for example, the gyroscopic capabilities of the Steam Controller, there are others as well. For well, one, uh, the Steam Controller has a touch menu function and you can adjust uh, your trigger to use iron sight and then fire with just one trigger with your desired hip fire mode. There's also mouse region emulation, there's outer ring bindings which I find amazing, mode shifts, action sets, multi-button mapping for one input and a more recent function that I am really looking forward to of course being the activators which you can look up somewhere someday maybe but basically if someone 
who reviewed Steam Controller properly had seen all these functions, they wouldn't simply just disregard users of the Steam Controller as customization junkies, and instead would realize that the Steam Controller requires you to identify your ideal playstyle, which is why a lot of these reviewers who even try using the community configs realize they're never really perfect, and that's simply because the Steam Controller itself requires you to know yourself perhaps even better than the controller at some point. Ready for me to describe to you what my learning experience was? What my learning curve was like? Well, there's none. I'm not even joking. Now, to be honest, if you're stubborn and really used to dual analog controls, then, well, yeah, you're fucked. But if you are one of those who loves feeling in control of your controller and your game, j please buy it, sir. I have no problems with first impressioning. Actually, never mind. Honestly, I do. And with the number of first impressions videos I saw for the Steam Controller, it really made me realize, what the fuck's the point of a first impressions video? You can't really use them as a reliable barometer for the quality of the product in question. It's just a first impressions video. It works for games. I really don't think it works for a product that you have physically seen before, because at the end of the day, most of the first impressions videos for the Steam Controller were really just vapid and honestly like an excuse, basically a half past seven review. Now what really angered me as I browsed through YouTube to see the reviews and comment section as well for any Steam Controller related videos was for one, the reviewers attitude towards the Steam Controller, they were, the attitudes were incredulous and they always seemed, they either seemed to be really antagonistic towards the Steam Controller or they would review it very uncomfortably and the only reason why they're uncomfortable is because they're unsure. And then that begs the question, why are you reviewing it then? And honestly, well, I mean, we all know the answer is because for, it's for views. But still, like, generally, uh, you would think that people who review, co you know, items and products should have some level of responsibility to give a proper diagnosis. If you're unsure of a product, what's the point of making that video? Anyway. And besides that, there was the comments section, which is even worse for some of these videos. One of the most infuriating ones, in my opinion, was the group of comments that would mention that people who purchased the Steam Controller and supported it were brainwashed people because they wanted to justify the price they paid for it. And these same people compare it to the Xbox controller. And the reason for disliking the Steam controller is because the Steam controller has no dual analog sticks and for the different positions that the buttons take. And they're calling Steam controller users brainwashed. Very convincing. Just, just listen to this video right here. The first thing you'll notice after picking up the Steam controller is just how cheap it feels. The Steam Controller is made entirely of plastic, except for its rubberized thumbstick. In contrast to the Xbox One controller, the Steam Controller feels like a cheap gamepad you buy to play games on your iPad. Introducing to you, ladies and gentlemen, the fundamental theorem of the cheap matic Basically, the higher the proportion of the video where you find yourself listening to someone talk about how the Steam Controller feels cheap, looks ugly, the more vapid and more unnecessary that video was. Most of the big reviewers who talked about the Steam Controller seems to always bring this point up like it's a staple for every Steam Controller review video. To them, please grow up, it's a controller. And for one, as I said again and again, the Xbox controller does not look pretty by itself either, so... 
Now I am going to begin comparing the Steam controller with the Xbox One Elite controller. Now some may ask why I am doing this. For one, they came around the same time and that was a blessing in disguise. Because I feel that might have unveiled a lot about the reviewers in question here. Just by the difference in treatment due to familiarity and possible prejudice. The Elite controller can store up to 250 different controller settings and you can adjust your responsivity and they have button mapping. However, they failed to actually mention that. For example, in IGN's case, when they were reviewing the Steam controller, but they jumped at it for the Xbox Elite controller. To add further to that, the Steam controller has a canvas of controls for you to make for each and every game that you have in Steam. Most big reviewers tend to cover the case and presentation for the Xbox One Elite controller as well, and the way they do it is strikingly similar to the one you'll see following this. Some stuff in the controller, so you'll need that. Presentation's nice. Card nice. Case. Yeah, yeah it comes just right out. I like that it lifts right up and you got It's that, already in the case. The nice clamshell case there, yeah. And if you can hear, it's kind Solid. of a hard case, yeah. It's, oh, wow. So already you can feel it's a degree heftier than the original Xbox controller, like it is actually heavy. Honestly, I think I have a much better controller at home right now. Um, it weighs, I'd say, maybe about 15 kilograms. Really great for impromptu bicep curls and, well, it's, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's heavier than your controller. And actually, yeah, that's another thing right there. Uh, as a cameraman, we love clicks. <laughs> so when things like snap in, like, I'll put it near the mic so you can hear it. Oh my god, they snap when applied to their placeholders. Oh, I just came. That is a really, that is a, a braided, hefty USB cable and it's long too. Let's see how long this thing is. Read of about stepping on that or yanking. Oh wow. Probably eight, this is at least eight feet. Yeah. Hmm. Never mind. No comment. Never mind. And you can see that that allows me to push the trigger only halfway down in order to activate the button, which again in first person shooters allows you to really fire yeah, right very on quickly. Yeah. Yes, because the Steam controller does not have anything to spam a button in, say, an FPS game. Absolutely not. No such option is available. Totally not. I feel that the main reason why some people would want to buy the, this Elite controller simply because of the fact that they just want to spend more money on a controller and they do not care as long as they feel that it has some level of prestige in a controller. Now comments will always be comments and especially when it comes to controllers I seem to witness quite a bit of what one would call immaturity. But this this particular comment took the cake and it just said, spoiler alert, the SC is trash. And after some discussion, the original poster did end up conceding and said, they just tried too hard on it, in my opinion. Now, I just found it weird that he decided to retract to an opinionated statement and identify that specifically, but his original post was just factual. It was like the scene controller was just garbage. And that was what really caught my eye and just made me realize that it is quite one-sided. This battle that the Steam controller is engaged in to try to win people over, they're mostly just like smoking addicts. They don't really want to change their ground and standpoint. And I understand that but comments also shape people's impressions on the controller itself. And a very surface level analysis of the YouTube community's opinion on the Steam controller would just lead one to believe that the Steam controller is trash. Or it's just a weird, very unique sort of garbage that you find. Another problem that I see is that even if some people might not consider the Steam controller as trash, they still see it as unnecessary and they jump at that one argument. Does it replace the keyboard and mouse? And here's the problem. It was never set out 
to be a product that will replace the keyboard and mouse. And I actually feel that it could replace the keyboard and mouse. But the reason why it can't is because the keyboard and mouse have been a staple for decades. The Steam controller has been here around for I'd say about a year and it is still being updated. Now this is just purely speculation. Some part of me has always thought that the Steam controller was released by Valve because they actually wanted to see about how bad the brand loyalty might have possibly clouded consumers' judgment when it came to the quality of product. Now I have searched all over the web to look for reasons why people might have comms over the Steam controller. And one particular video, which I don't remember, but helped me shed some light onto the matter, used a specific phrase. And this individual said that there was no overarching control paradigm. And he did not like that about the Steam controller. Which made me realize this entire issue that the Steam controller is facing with pleasing the market for a controller was just familiarity. Most people are used to a fundamental arrangement of controls and triggers, and they usually only accept additional buttons to set controls, I think. For example, the Xbox One Elite controller has additional paddles, and even those additional paddles do not actually add more keybinds, they just help you click the four buttons on top. However, the Steam controller removes the dual analog sticks. In conclusion, the Steam controller is fucking amazing. Now you might have some trouble playing CSGO, although I might even be wrong with that statement. But then again, why would you even play that game? Seriously, why? People there find skins sexy. They lose money over pixels. Yes, this is real life. Now, most reviewers are just not genuine. I feel that they don't understand the potential consumer groups for the Steam controller and the synonymous controller consumer group parties who wouldn't want to play with the Steam controller. Now, sales for this product really don't represent the quality of the Steam controller and is frankly asking a lot of them to try something new. But if you can, you have my gratitude, my good sir, or ma'am, or whatever you are. Buckle me!